Okay, tonight we're going to talk about BCP. Now, BCP is bulk copy program, and it's actually been around for a long time. Uh, probably the, the main reason I'm doing this video now is because BCP just gets so incredibly overlooked. Nobody ever bothers writing tutorials about it or even learning much about it anymore, but it's an incredibly useful tool. What BCP does is it obviously, it's called bulk copy program, so what it does is it bulk copies data into and out of tables and that's really all it does is it takes data to and from text files and you can't expect it to do any more than that it doesn't go to access databases or ODBC sources or Excel files or Fox Pro databases or Oracle or anything else it goes from a table to text and then to text to a table and that's all it does but it does it pretty well and there's actually some some pretty flexible options so, uh, t in, in this video, I think I'm just going to concentrate on BCP out, which uh, is, you know, probably the, the first place I started when I started doing this many years ago. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get into this and I'll explain a couple of the, the nuances to you. Now, first and foremost, before you start doing this, um, you need to understand a little bit of something about uh, writing, writing data to text files. It's going to make your life a little bit easier. When, when you go writing to text files, you want to make sure that you put the format into something that's, that's going to be more or less foolproof, or at least as foolproof as you can get it. One of the things I've seen a lot is I've seen text files come across with comma delimiters for the columns and commas in the data itself without any kind of text qualifier. And so what that's going to do is every time it runs across an address or some other kind of text field with a comma in it, it's going to assume that that's another column and it's going to try to delimit it and then you know your BCP is going to blow up. So you want to try to pick a column delimiter that's that's not going to be found in your text or isn't very common in text at the very least. And uh, usually the pipe symbol is the absolute best that I've found. I don't think I've I've ever failed to load data by uh, by delimiting it with a pipe and for those of you that don't know what a pipe is, that is uh, the shift backslash key. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the shift backslash. A couple other things I've seen. I've seen uh, a tilde, which is uh, the key just the left of the one. That tilde is the little squiggly mark on top of there, so you'll do shift tilde. And I have seen combinations. I've seen like two pipes, or I've seen... Uh, two tildes, or I've seen tilde pipe, or something like that. Any combination of those, don't make it too complicated, of course, but any, any combination of those is actually going to work pretty well for you. So, to that end, let's go ahead and start doing some BCP, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll show you a couple of the things as we get started. So, BCP, right here, is just a command line program. You can come over here to the, to the command prompt, and type in BCP and get a question mark and you can see all of the flags that it'll take. So it's just uh, a simple command line program. There really is no GUI for it. Um, I think maybe at one point somebody wrote one, uh, but uh, this is good enough and if you want to write a GUI it's it's simple enough to write a GUI for yourself. I mean it's, it's you know just a simple little command line with some parameters in it so you know you could parse strings together with VB script like that pretty easily but uh, you know it's not really necessary so one other thing I've seen a couple times where BCP isn't in the path and uh, you know maybe I'll discuss in another video how to how to actually set that path but right now I've got BCP in the path so I can call it from anywhere so and the SQL setup should do that for you, but I've seen a couple times where it was either removed or something didn't go right and set up and, and it wasn't in the path. But let's see, we've got our sample database here. We're just going to go ahead and jump right in. And what we're going to do is we're going to take data from a table to a text file first. So you start off with BCP, and you've got to tell it you got to tell it the database and the and the schema and the table that you want. So here, that's my database, my SSIS tutorial database, DBO, and my BCP test table. BCP isn't case sensitive, but there are a couple of the parameters that are. 
but as far as you know whether or not you know your your database name is in the right case or your table name is in the right case or the file names are in the right case it doesn't really matter so BCP uh, I'm gonna start with with the the exe then I'm gonna go to the database and table info now I've got to pick a direction out because I'm taking it out from the table the way I always used to remember this because this used to really confuse me was that it's it's the direction from the table so obviously if we're trying to put it in the table it's going to be in so if you if you remember out and in and that it's from the tables perspective then you'll you'll be successful with that uh, and again I capitalized out but that's just for me it this is just as good but you know I like to see a nice bold in and out in my BCP statement so I can tell which direction it's going if I got it in, if I have it in a batch file or something like that so immediately after that you have to pick your output file uh, BCP test let's say test one dot text the minus T switch tells it to use a trusted connection so I'm going to log in with Windows authentication if uh, if I didn't want to do that, I would say minus U, pick my username, and then minus P, and then my password. Now, the way I've got it set up right now, I'm not going to do that. I want to use minus T. The way I've got it set up right now, I haven't specified a server, and that's because it's, gonna, it's going to assume a local server. If I need to, to BCP from a separate server, I'll do the minus S server name and I could do that here too but since I'm on the local server then you know there's no need for me to specify a server name but this is all I need right now well almost all I need right now to export a file and in, into a text to export a table into a text file I need one other thing I need to either specify minus C or minus N and right now I'm going to choose minus N minus N is native format and that's going to be you know a bunch of foreign compiled looking characters to you but that's uh, SQL Server's native format and what that's gonna do is it's gonna it's gonna give you a much faster performance on your BCP character format is going to be a readable format and you know in a minute we'll discuss the the differences but right now let's go ahead and hit enter and you can see how fast that is I've got 357,000 rows in just a couple seconds, really. I mean, that was pretty fast. So, you know, I've already got myself a, a nice test file there. Okay, and I can see here that I didn't, my, my text file didn't show up here, and I'm looking at it, and I see I put it in the wrong place. So I'm going to go ahead and just run it again. put it in the folder I want it in there we go and you can see it showing up right there now if we take a look at this file it's actually going to take a a few seconds to bring this up because that's a big file and notepad is is absolutely horrible with uh, with big files that's because it tries to buffer it all at once so you know if, if you want to if you want to do this kind of text editing there are text editors out there that are much better than than notepad at stuff like this. I don't think notepad has had any code changes since Windows 95. I think I remember reading that once. But here we'll wait a few seconds for this to come up. Maybe I can move that over a little bit so it's all the way on the screen. And uh, I'm actually going to pause this video until this comes up. I'm not going to make you sit there and wait for that. Okay here we are. It finally came up. I guess I've been I guess I've been waiting about 60 seconds for this and you can see here that there's a lot of unreadable characters in there um, you can see that there is some text though uh, you know this guy right here is text uh, actually in my data generator I chose dinosaur names so that's what all those guys are but you can see there's plenty of stuff here you couldn't really edit this and know what you're editing because you got all this stuff in here I mean I have no idea what that stuff is really um, so that's native format that's not really anything you can do anything with Let's go ahead and do another one in uh, in character format, and I'll I'll show you the difference. I'm going to come here. 
There we go. All I need to do to make that possible is change that N to a C. And just for comparison, we'll change that to a 2. There we go. Now I just need to go back and get my file. There we go. And there's number two. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it while this while this opens. Okay, here you go. It's been about 90 seconds or so. And you can see this is a much more readable file. This is just absolutely beautiful. And uh, it put it in its own in its own format here. One thing that I didn't do this last time that I'm going to go back and do is I'm going to is I didn't put uh, my pipe delimiters in there for my columns. So this this uh, defaulted to tab. So let's go ahead and redo that because I really don't like that. We'll come over here and all you got to do is say minus T. There you go. And the uh, the column delimiter goes in and double quotes and so it's telling you to use a pipe for that. Uh, overwrite 2. I like to I like to delete my files. There we go. Here and enter. Good, perfect. And there's number 2. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. I'm going to pause again while this loads. There we go. It came much came up much faster this time. Now you can see the the delimiters here in be, in between these columns, and that's going to be a much cleaner load. There's not going to be anything going on there at all. None of my data has pipes in it, so this is going to be an excellent load when we go to do this in one of the next videos. Uh, let's see. If you wanted to pull uh, only portion only a portion of the table, there's a couple ways you could do that. Uh, You go like this and say again I'm gonna go ahead and do this number three number three good so what that did was that just minus L said that the last line is number 10 so when you come over here to three you can see you got 10 rows 1 through 10 so that's one way to do it another way and probably a little bit more SQL way. I actually prefer the the minus L switch just because I it, it's a cleaner load or, or it's a cleaner extraction than writing a query. But you can actually write a query for this. And the way that works is you say BCP and then just type your query. Select top 10 star from test. Now you have to specify the query out parameter and other than that the rest of it stays the same except this is a little bit redundant right there and just so you can see that we got the same thing let's call that 3a. There you go and I've got 3a and I've got the exact same thing I had before, 1 through 10. So let me show you this command again. So here you've got BCP, and you don't really need the database and table info because you're actually querying, but notice how I do specify the database, the schema, and the table in the query. And then if I were doing it from another server, then I would specify the server name in the, in the query as well, or not in the query, but in the command as well. And then I have to have this query out right here. You have to have that. And then you just specify the output file. Uh, the minus T again is the uh, trusted connection that tells it to use my Windows authentication. Minus C tells it to use character format. Minus T tells them, tells me what I want the, uh, the column delimiter to be. And in this case I've chosen a pipe again. Now it kind of stands to reason 
that if I can say select top 10 star that I could say just about anything and you're absolutely right I could specify just a single value here which I think has quite a bit of use especially when you want to put data into Excel so if I say select column 3 and column delimiter won't do me much but there you go and I'll do that now I'm getting 350,000 dinosaur names pumped out to this to this file. I'll pause it while it loads. There we go. That actually loaded pretty fast, just a few seconds. But you see now I've just got a nice list of dinosaur names here that I could use anywhere I wanted to. If I wanted to use those in a data generator somewhere or a uh, an Excel file or whatever. I use stuff like this. I use social security numbers and phone numbers and addresses and stuff that I extract from real databases and real names all the time and put them in my data generators and use them as dictionary files. Um, I wouldn't be too terribly surprised if hackers use this kind of stuff to, to generate their, their dictionary files. So anyway, those are the basics of uh, BCP out and there's not too much more to it than that. You've got some more parameters that you could specify but those are all well documented and, and these are the, the best ones right here. Uh, I didn't show you doing anything from another server because it's really not necessary. All you would have to do to do that again would just say minus s and then specify the server name and then specify the credentials if you want to use a trusted connection then minus t will work for you. But other than that uh, BCP is a, is a pretty powerful little tool. It's really, really fast, and uh, there are going to be other videos showing you some more advanced features of BCP, but uh, right now this is the basics of BCP up.